Right, this is the second part of the Snapchat Q&A and um, if I asked you guys to send your questions in on Snapchat and um, and I said I'd answer them and if you want to get involved in the, Snapchat, in the next Snapchat Q&A um, I'll put the, my social media up there and you can um, find me on that and get involved in the next one. So next question is from, sorry if I can't pronounce the name properly, Anjali. Um, Hi Ryan, do you have any tips to prepare for second year medicine? How did you find second year? Thank you. Okay, tips for second year medicine, right. Be prepared for the huge step up because first year medicine was quite easy, it's enjoyable. Um, you know, you're doing topics like the heart, the lungs, which are actually interesting. Second year medicine gets a lot harder. Neuroscience, bloody hell, it is hard. Neuroscience, the amount of anatomy you have to do in second year. You have to do the whole like upper limbs, lower limbs, the bones, the, the nerves, the muscles, the blood vessels. And then you've got to do like the back, the shoulders, the, um, it is crazy. And there's so many bones you have to learn, it's ridiculous. So be prepared for that. Um, I would recommend start using the anatomy flashcards from you know your first couple of weeks because just just start learning them, like keep learning them, go through them. I know it might be hard, but like do it with a friend or something. Just cause second year medicine is a lot harder than first year medicine. And if you if you don't start preparing for it, if you think that, you know, it's like first year medicine, carry on the way you were revised with first year medicine, you will fail. And that's what happened to me. You know, I failed my first um, first exam in second year medicine. So then I had to make up for that in my final exam in sec of second year medicine. Um, so yeah, just make sure you prepare from early and be ready for the big jump um, because they're trying to teach you everything so that you know, you're know you prepared to go into the hospital and start working in the hospitals because from third year you learn like clinical stuff, so more like um, illness related and like patient related stuff. So um, that's why second year is quite hard. Okay, so I'll try and answer this bit by bit. So any tips for medical school interviews? Okay, for medical school interviews, the best thing I can tell you is prepare with a friend. Now, um, find a friend who's also doing medicine or wants to do medicine or dentistry and just keep preparing with them. Make sure you give each other constructive feedback because you'll do things that you don't even notice that you're doing. So for example, I had a friend who used to rub his uh, thighs all the time. Every time I asked him a question, he stopped rubbing his thighs and I was thinking like, what the hell's happening here? So make sure you do it with a friend and give each other constructive criticism um, so that they can improve because you'll not notice half of these things that you're doing. Like I used to fidget a lot, uh, stuff like that. Another thing as well, prepare for every type of question you can. By prepare, I don't mean write out a whole paragraph for every question, uh, every type of question. I mean like do a few bullet points for like uh, the different types of questions and um, just so you got an idea basically. Um, and, you, and you feel a lot more confident when you actually go to the uh, actual interview because you basically, like you feel like this, like the feeling, the thoughts that were going through my head was like, right, just for, just ask us any question because I've prepared for basically everything. I've been preparing for months, like a month or two for this interview. So you can ask me any question, I'll be able to answer it because I've already prepared for it. Like that's how confident I was feeling. And like, obviously it might sound a bit arrogant, but it was like because I was that prepared for it and because I was that confident, like I got three interviews and then I got my three offers, I, like I didn't get a rejection after the interviews. So that's why I say prepare and like do it with a friend as well, like it helps so much. So Haya asked, how can I take efficient lecture notes? Should I type or handwrite or both and perhaps some first year tips? Okay, so this is a video which I probably need to be doing because a lot of people ask it. So when you want to do lecture notes, and you want to do it efficiently. The best thing I would recommend for efficiency is um, to, to type them up. So type up all your notes because when you're handwriting your notes, the thing is like there's just so much information in lectures and so many pictures and diagrams and stuff that you need in your revision. And if you draw every single one out, or if you're um, you know, writing all the notes out, it's gonna take ages. Like I remember my first year I tried it and it was taking me like 
four or five hours a day just to finish a day's worth of lecture. Now imagine coming back from lectures at five o'clock and I've been sitting at home in my room for like four or five hours doing summarizing lectures. So I finished like eight, nine o'clock and there's my friends like chilling, playing FIFA, watching movies and now I'm sitting in my room bloody writing lecture notes. So I kind of gave up after a while. Um, that's why I would recommend like typing the notes up um, just because you can like copy and paste pictures and stuff like that. Coming near to the exams, do mind maps. So like you summarizing the, the typed up notes and then like, you know, you're re-jogging your memory and stuff. So that's probably the best thing to do. Pfizer asks, can you take sociology, biology and chemistry to apply to medicine and is a gap year viable? Okay, sociology, sociology unfortunately isn't classed as an actual A-level, like an academic A-level by most unis. So like if you do take sociology or general studies or critical thinking, the chances are you probably won't um, be like, it. I don't think the unis will accept it. So next question. I'm currently studying adult nursing but interested in medicine. I have no A-level science. Do you think I'll be able to get into medicine through an agency like abroad? Love your YouTube videos, so inspiring. Uh, thank you for the message and yeah, so you, you can definitely study medicine abroad. Um, you ch you'd have to get in contact with the agencies and ask them, but the chances are they will let you uh, study medicine abroad. Um, you might have to do like an extra qualification or something, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If you want to do medicine in the UK, again, you can also do that. All you have to do is an access to medicine course at most like most colleges do it. So like Manchester, I remember do one, London do one, Newcastle do one. Basically, check in the college near you, they'll do an access to medicine course. It's like a one year course. The chances are it'll probably be free as well. Um, if not, it, it's not too expensive. And then once you've done that, you can apply to medicine. So um, that's one option. So I do chem, physics and maths. BCC in AS would I get into foundation courses for medicine if your predicted grades are like ABB or AAB then yeah you'll probably get in or even BBB you'll probably get in medicine at university um, so Becca asked at your university in which year of the course are you allowed to go into hospitals and have patient contact so I'm in my third year well going into my third year now and I'll be allowed in the hospital like I'm gonna be working in hospitals and having patient contact but I've been work like not working but I've been in hospitals from first year and second year like for placements and stuff so we do get contact from like first year even and um, Callum asked what was your first experience of the dissection room like did it take a while to get used to okay so dissection room it is like the first time I went in the smell is, is, is crazy, like all you can smell is formaldehyde um, which is like the preservative that they use on the dead bodies and um, like all the bodies are covered up, like all the heads and, and the limbs are covered up and um, it's quite scary at first but then like you know you get used to it. Okay so Anthony asked, got a quick question, um, as a medical student what sort of football teams can you get involved in? Okay, so football teams, you can get involved in your uni football team, however that is very demanding so you have to often train like three to four times a week um, and then travel on the weekend for like football games, like big games nationally. Um, there is also the medic team, now MedSoc always have a football team in every uni, um, they even probably do football games like every week, like our MedSoc, they, we play every Sunday. Um, so we put the Astro for like two hours, play every Sunday. Um, so we do that one and like you can play on the Medsoc team and there's like a one, like in, in Easter, there's like one tournament like nationally um, called NAMS, which you can take part in and you can do that. We, I used to also have like a five side team that we used to play. Um, so there's a five side team um, on Fridays and like a five side league and that was pretty sick. So you can get involved in that. Um, and there's like medics like within medicine like other people organize football so we had one on Wednesdays and sometimes you could turn up to that on a Wednesday so there's so many opportunities like if you make it or if you can get enough numbers then there's always a chance. Are whole body cadaver dissections gross or fun? Um, 
We don't do dissections, so we have pro sections where the bodies are already like dissected and like we just use them. Um, I wouldn't say it's fun because it's not something like I enjoy doing in my spare time. Do you know what I mean? So like, but it is helpful in a way. Um, depends on your anatomy staff. So if you've got good anatomy staff, then it's helpful. If you haven't got good anatomy staff, then it isn't really that helpful. But I wouldn't say it's fun. Next question, how is the work-life balance in first year? Do you get much time to do other stuff like sports, societies, etc.? First year, you get so much spare time, so make the most of it. Join societies, join all the sports you can. Just make sure you also do a bit of work um, and you'll be fine. So, Asma asked, um, what is your opinion on PBL? PBL is very hard, like, Imagine right medicine. There's so much content now if, if if you go to a uni where it's PBL and they just tell you right learn about the heart or here's a person with like um, Atrial fibrillation now Come back and you have to learn like all of this about atrial fibrillation and like um, Everything else around it. It is Like it's a task in itself just to summarize lectures now imagine trying to learn all the content yourself and like you don't know what you need to learn, how much in detail you need to learn, because you could learn everything about atrial fibrillation. You could go on for days, but I like the fact that because I don't have PBL and because I'm taught in lectures like that, I know how in depth I need to learn something in. So like I can sort of stop, like stop at a point and be like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to learn anymore because I don't need to know that much more. So yeah. Do you prefer over the integrated traditional approach? I definitely don't prefer PBL. It's good sometimes, um, but no, I wouldn't want to do it as a like a degree. How do you take notes uh, during lectures and which laptop do you have? I don't take notes during lectures, I just listen. Well, I try to listen. Sometimes people distract this. Um, and which laptop do you have? I used to have a laptop, but some flipping idiot robbed me house. So, nick me laptop, me YouTube camera, all me YouTube, every, all me YouTube equipment, and 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 it is, and nick me brother's shoes, some Air Max 90s, nick me sister's school clothes, like brand new school clothes we just bought for her. He nick, he nick that as well, and me sponsorship items. So like, I had like this clothing company sent me like some clothes out and stuff. The little idiot nicked that as well. So, do you get to have any fun in the course? Yeah, there is a lot of fun in the course as well. It is what you make of it. So, like, if you make medicine your entire life, your every day, you wake up, you live, you breathe medicine. Like, you're gonna, you're not gonna enjoy it. So, like, but like, if you go in, have a bit of fun, have a bit of banter with your friends. Obviously, stick to the rules and stuff. Um, make sure you revise like enough, um, do other things outside of medicine, uh, sports, hobbies, then you'll enjoy it. Like it shouldn't be a burden or it shouldn't be too hard. Like just make sure you have a good balance. So temporary G asked, should I do any reading or preparation in the summer before starting medical school? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you really are keen then just read through Grey's Anatomy, the big book. Um, you might find that interesting and it'll prepare you. Um, is it a disadvantage in any way if I haven't taken physics A-level? No, you don't have to do physics A-level for medicine. I don't know who told you you'd have to do physics A-level for medicine because medicine and physics have hardly anything to do with each other. Okay, so um, someone asked, okay, so someone asked about graduate entry medicine. Now, do they place more emphasis on your degree grade and your UK cap or your GCSE and A-levels. Now, if you're a graduate, they place a lot more emphasis on your degree grade and your UK cap. You're expected to have a lot higher UK cap score as a graduate, so they expect you know quite high UK cap scores. Your GCSE, A-levels, it doesn't really matter because you've done it so long ago. Um, it's like it's not outdated, but like over the years, GCSE, A-level structure changes, so it's like you know. It's like asking your dad, what did you get for GCSEs? And if he says, uh, you know, he got like 
a, a, a C or something or a D. Like you might think it's bad, but back then I think I think if I remember correctly, a C or a D was actually like was quite good. I think maybe I'm just making that up, but yeah. Aruba asked any tips on your personal statement. Okay, personal statement. The best tip I can give is plan for spend more time on the planning and less time on actually writing it up. So planning, I think I spent about two three weeks. Now by this I mean plan right out like the structure that you want to do right out what you want to mention about every work experience every voluntary work what do you what did you learn from it and um, write out all the keywords that you want to put in write out any fancy words that you've just read up read in the dictionary that you want to put in um, write down like l literally plan the whole thing and then write it up like it won't it won't take that long writing it up and then like spend one or two days cutting it down if you've got like more than 4,000 characters. So Mustafa asks, does the medicine course prepare you in a sense for a career in surgery or practice in clinic? Also is the beginning the hardest or does it get harder as the course goes on? So the, the degree gets harder as the course goes on and the degree does prepare you for surgery because you're doing a lot of anatomy so like you get to like you need a lot of anatomy and knowledge of anatomy to be good to be a good surgeon. Um, and you also need like manual dexterity and stuff but like obviously as you go on throughout the years you'll improve on that um, I wouldn't worry about that from an early age like that's for later on after you've graduated then I start worrying what is the best advice you'd give for being productive during lectures uh, best advice have a coffee um, or a tea before a lecture um, and stay away from friends that are very distracting and and put your phone on silent turn your wi-fi off that's probably it um but obviously they're you know common sense but yeah so leo asked how often do you learn oskis throughout your medicine course and um, oskis we learn like we do like one clinical session a week so like one week it might be examination of the upper limb one week it might be examination of the heart one week it's examination of the lungs examination of the back examination of your nervous system etc so like one every week um and we spend about two three hours on that maybe kjs asked hi i want to ask a question about first year books which would you recommend I wouldn't recommend any first year books um, because you, uh, honestly you, most of the information is online or in your lectures and there's no point forking out that money for like a book that's just going to sit in your bookshelf and collect dust like it's not worth it. Maybe later on but there's no point rushing into buying books now. Okay so that's the end of the second part of the Snapchat Q&A, um, stay tuned and the third part will be up. Don't tease me now